All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. It's your boy, John, retired ballerina, race car driver, professional saw builder. We got a, well, I can't say we got a good video for you today. I am on a run here where I am going to do a video every day for 30 days. I really think this channel can blow up, and I got a couple people helping me that, that are on my side thinking the same thing. With the help of you guys that watch my videos and subscribe, I really appreciate you guys. Uh, people say that just as like a, a, a default. I mean it. I do. I really mean it. I love that you guys watch these videos. It's really cool. So this is going to be a, this is a little bit older video, but this saw is pretty rad. This is the 500i, the crazy custom black 500 that kind of blew up on Instagram. And yeah, a lot of people that wanted 500s after they seen this thing ripping. So I'll go through it a little bit. I eventually think I'm going to do a video where I go through and explain how I do all the port timing in these 500s. I think a lot of guys are having trouble with them. And I think I could help some people out. They're, they're not that tricky of a saw if, you, if you're willing to commit to doing a little bit different build on them. So one thing I'm going to say, I never know where I'm going to go with these videos. This is all just off the cuff, you know. I don't rehearse this stuff. Uh, I usually don't do more than a couple takes either if I screw up. So there's a guy out there that is claiming he's doing 500i 660 hybrid builds. The build I do. He's full of shit. Absolutely 100% full of shit. I think that's a scumbag move. And dude, obviously you watch my videos. Uh, come on, really? You got to lie to get some clout? Pathetic. I'm going to do a series of videos where I get into some of the more custom saws that I have. The saws that you guys have seen, you know, multiple times, but I've never actually pulled the covers off, talked in detail about all the porting and modifications I've done to them. So let's start with this guy right here. <laughs> Okay, so let's get into it. I'm going to try to make this as fast as possible. There is a lot going on with this saw. So first off, this bad girl is from Greece. That's why I have this sticker on it. I always take all my warning stickers and everything off. But I left that one on there because it's different than the U.S. ones. But I had to have a 500i real bad. And you couldn't get them here. They kept, you know, jerking us around saying they were going to release them. And finally, I just was like, whatever. And I paid $75,312 for it. It was damn expensive. But I would do it all over again. Um, the ECU, I kind of think that they have a different mapping, but I can't confirm that. I really can't. Uh, I just saw as a runner, though. But I instantly, when I got into them, wanted to do something about the, the crazy piston, crazy port timing. And that's why this was one of the first two hybrid builds, which is a 660 piston instead of the stock 500i piston. So this is a windowed piston. Obviously, it's much different, and it allows for me to mess around with decking and machining and still not get my intake uh, port timing out of whack. But you do have to machine this area out here so it fits on the connecting rod, and there's a lot to it. So I've talked about that before. I also have... The European muffler, since it's from Greece, that 
I cut the baffle out, or it didn't have one, one of the two, I can't remember actually, and it didn't have a, a spot for the spark screen. But I'm going to have to do a whole different video on this, but I found out some mind-blowing information out about all these modded muffler covers, dual port mufflers, triple port uh, versus stock, and I, I cannot, I'm blown away. So I got to do a whole video on that. I'm not going to get into it in here, but I'll hint to it. My rear muffler port, the stock port is plugged. It's plugged. And then I run a modded muffler cover. I wonder why I do that. So the as far as the performance side of it, obviously it's ported, machined, machined piston, finger ported, so the windows can come into play and join the party. And it's decked, squish is cut, runs a really tight squish. And intake. Okay, as soon as I I'm trying to think, I'm trying to knock all the performance stuff out right away runs a max flow this is a chopped up 500i that the cover and then this is a 660 max flow because again when i was messing with these things you couldn't get a max flow for a 500i i do run two of these uh sponge washers i call them so it seals a little better and then the filter base i cut this hood off of it and i try to make as much of like an intake stack as i can air compressor there we go so intake modified i'll also in the on the air filter base i get rid of those two aluminum bolts that go and that hold it on and i put steel bolts in it uh, i can't stand those aluminum bolts so actually let's take the might as well take all this stuff off so this is how this thing goes in there this is i know this is chopped up i wouldn't do that i would just run the the 500i max flow that's what i would do but again didn't have that when when i did this uh here's another one i get rid of i hate absolutely hate that stupid quarter turn or half turn whatever that thing is this thing hate them so i got rid of that and i put a just a regular air filter knob on it and it kind of stays in the cover sometimes kind of doesn't but just to do that all you got to do is run a bolt backwards which is loose i should tighten that up but or no actually i leave it loose i want it loose on purpose and then it's just a regular uh m4 and then you you can use the air filter knob off of like a 461 and you just have to drill this hole out a little bit. That's why it's orange because it was black. Then I drilled it out and I haven't re-dyed the plastics. Dyed plastics, not paint. Dye. All right. Glad we got that straightened out. And what else we got going on? The decompass plug. That's not a huge deal. Got a different handle on it. I, I don't do anything with the the injectors or anything like that i have played around with that stuff they get more fuel than than they can handle the the problem is mapping i've talked about this before i've tried piggyback you know cdis and ecus and i've tried all that stuff you plug the shit into it and see if it does anything and these these ecus are really smart uh just for example you can't even jump you, if you unplug the stop switch it won't start which, you know, you could kind of understand that on a normal coil, though, you unplug the, the ground lead, it'll it'll run. You just can't shut it off. So this is opposite. But if you jump that stop switch, it still won't run. So that's kind of crazy. Uh, if you know what I mean, it's it's kind of wild. Uh, it's got it's got one of these handles on it. I like that better. The I don't need to take this cover off just because it's cosmetic stuff. I get rid of the badge and I put the, that aluminum piece on it and obviously powder coated i have this skid plate on it and then i put a i'm going to redo that kickstand a little better but i put a little bolt on it because even though i'm running the west coast dogs for the 462 with his awesome side cover i really do like that thing that's awesome uh the any bigger spikes kind of make them lean a little bit so i put like a foot pad kickstand i'm gonna redo that it has the three-quarter wrap handle, I'm going to swap that. I don't need it. And for me, it's actually kind of more of a hassle. So I know they look cool and everything, but I'm actually going to swap that with a flush handle. And I put the heat shield from a 461 or 460, whatever you want to call it. It's a little thicker, better heat shield. I I have made a custom scrunch that's always on it. This is actually made out of a snap-on uh, <laughs> ratcheting wrench. The freaking like $150 wrench. And I really like that. So that stays on it at all times. And it's a steel scrunch. 
that's now ratcheting. So I got this doohickey on here so it keeps it on there really nice. It doesn't flop around. And oh, what else can I think of right now? I have a different chain roller catch on it. It's aluminum. Let me take this. Uh, oh, yeah. So I have the, I might have to put the phone down for this. I have, oh, I can, what am I doing? This thing's been out for testing, so I just, I just got it back. And I'm glad to see it back, so I'm not used to, I might have to do, <laughs> I have to put the phone down. I'm in a dumbest angle right now. Oh, here we go. Hold on one second. I can't. I'm like at the dumbest angle. Uh, I was going to say, this thing has retained uh, retained bar nuts in it. And they're kind of a pain in the ass, but... Oh, shit. There we go. I couldn't do that one-handed, sorry. So, this has the West Coast... I think, I can't remember what he calls this. It's, it's obviously, if you go on his website and check it out, you'll find it right away. Uh, I did modify it. I don't know if he has retained bar nuts in them now, but I made it so it's got retained bar nuts. I really like the... I like that, and uh, that's that's an awesome product. Also has the West Coast uh, Fowler's suspension. Absolutely crucial. Stock five, it doesn't matter if I could only do one mod to a five hundred. I'd be that Fowler's suspension, no joke. So aluminum chain roller doohickey. I oh I do oh this is kind of a this is kind of one of my secrets, but I will share. I run a nine pin on it. These things are torque monsters, and especially the way I build them. So you can't get a big enough sprocket. With that, I had to manipulate the bar a little bit. So otherwise, you can't. Uh, you have to either add a driver to your chain or maybe even two. But I just kind of shave the tail of the bar down a little bit. But I do run a nine pin in it, three ace chain still. I have God. What else is going on with this thing? I'm sure there's stuff I'm missing, but. I, t I talk about the skid plate. Yeah, I talk about the skid plate. I run a, oh, I run a 461 uh, bar plate, guide plate, whatever the hell they call that thing. And yeah, I'm going to swap this handle and put the flush handle on it. It's going to pain me a little bit as far as looks wise, but I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to make a couple cuts with it because I missed this damn thing. <laughs> This is the raddest thing I've ever seen in my life.